Hello everyone, this is Frank with Clean Carburetor. Here we have a rather old Tecumseh engine that's been sitting under my workbench for about at least 15 years, maybe 17 years, 18, without firing. So today we're going to take a look on how we can start an older engines that haven't been fired for a very long time. This is actually a 5 horsepower uh, snowblower engine. At the time, double shafted engines were used on mostly Arians snowblowers. It was a great idea of dropping the speed twice as from the main shaft speed for the traction uh, part of the snowblower because that makes all the parts inside the transmission much smaller. So the very first thing in order to start an older engine is to check um, three things. One is if we have oil, if we have a spark, and sure enough we don't want to mess with the carburetor the way it is and try to start it. For that part we're going to do something different. Looks, it looks like this guy doesn't have any oil in it left, so we're going to add some oil here. Now there are measuring cups that you might want to use and do it in one shot. The um, other way is, you as you pour, you keep eye on it on how much you pour it in and then and then pour some more. If you overfill it then you have to drain it. Okay, looks like we got it right at the full mark this time. With this, we're done with the oil. So the second part is to see if we have a spark or not. For that purpose you have to make sure that your governor it's not in all the way down position where the kill switch is going to interact with, uh, with your spark. So just put it to, 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 full, to full speed. It's like it's got a good spark. So we are good on that part too. So now let's get to the third part, the carburetor. So the carburetor as is, is probably gummed up after all these years. We're not gonna uh, attempt to start this engine with the carburetor as is. To clean the carburetor without taking it apart, we're gonna use the gum buster kit that uh, is now available for the Tecumseh engines comes with the purge valve that is going to fit this carburetor and I'm going to use the gum buster to clean the carburetor on the inside but without the carburetor disassembly or removal from the engine. Now the kit contains purge gas as well and this is this is not a solvent, this is just like compressed type of a gas, like a compressed air that is used at the end of the season to blow all the fuel remaining inside the carburetor so it will never gum up again. It uses the same valve that we're going to mount on the bottom of the carburetor and it's going to stay there for the good for the entire life of the engine. On our spare, the Kansi carburetor that uh, is the same as this one on the existing uh, Tecumseh engine, we're going to take the, the bottom screw off. And this bottom screw off on the Tecumseh's is the same time the main jet as well. Um, the main jet is right in the middle 
and there is a pilot or idle jet as well but we're not going to reuse this any longer instead we're going to use the clean carburetor purge valve you're going to replace it for good on this particular carburetor that we will be working on it's got the main jet same size as the original jet and also it's got the pilot jet on the side all we have to do here is to install the purge valve now never over torque the the fitting it's not that you can break it but there is no need to over torque it because the fitting has got the rubber seal impregnated inside the body of the valve itself if the orientation on the carburetor of the valve is not what you want it to be so you don't have enough room to work on it then you will install one of the supplied shims with this you're going to get each each little shim is going to give you one quarter of a turn last travel of the thread inside the carburetor you're going to position the fitting anywhere you want it and you might just tighten it lightly but do not over torque it there is no need for it the fuel is not going to leak out of it on older Tecumseh carburetors that were supplied at the time with the adjustable screw for the main jet so the fuel the air fuel ratio can be adjusted while you're running the engine we can use the clean carburetor purge valve on this particular carburetor as well all we're going to do here is we're going to remove the entire assembly of the main jet and the pilot jet and once again we're going to replace it with the clean carburetor purge valve since there is a manual uh, spring loaded drain valve here you can remove the cap from the purge valve in order to get some more room to twist the fitting around and press on the drain plug as well so <clears throat> once again you can use the shims in order to reposition the 90 degree fitting so just be careful when you go over the drain valve so you won't damage it so if we install say two of these shims we're gonna get about half a turn less of the valve inside the carb and with that a different completely different position about 90 degree from where we were before so we'll get about 90 degree orientation so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the, the bottom screw of the carburetor that holds the bowl so we're going to remove the main holding screw of the carburetor bowl and we're not going to use it again instead we're going to replace it with the clean carburetor valve purge valve that has got the same jets as the original engine uh, screw that holds the carburetor together and supplies the fuel to the engine so uh, it's a um, it's a quick replacement so let's connect the gum buster to the fitting
okay and now we're going to blast the carburetor two or three times once it starts dripping out it's sufficient and that is that means the carburetor is filled up with gum buster it looks like this carburetor takes only one shot so now we're gonna let it sit for about 20 minutes okay so after 20 minutes we're gonna apply one more shot of a gum buster to the carburetor I would say a short shot rather than long one this is to push all the gum that actually got loose inside the carburetor over the 20 minutes with this we can attempt to start the engine now on the gum buster only we're not gonna turn on the fuel the main fuel yet we're gonna start it on the gum buster only for this purpose we're not gonna apply the choke to the engine is because the level of gum buster inside the carburetor is rather high and it's gonna get more fuel than actually it can take than it actually needs to start. So let's give it a shot. Okay. And this is all we want. On a gun buster only without the main fuel on we want to make sure that the engines is try to start it's just a few firings out there it runs out of fuel and the engine is ready and the carburetor now is ready to receive the main fuel so let's fill the engine with the new fuel right now so let's get some main fuel in and turn the petcock on. So we'll get the fuel to the carburetor. Make sure the carb does not leak. And now we're gonna attempt to start it with the choke on. We're gonna apply the choke this time because the level in the carburetor bowl is right where it's supposed to be and the engine is cold so we're going to apply the choke to it Reinstall the uh, dust cap. The purge valve is going to stay on the carburetor for the rest of the life of this little engine. So once again, Gumbuster did it. There are many different type purge valves that go along with uh, with um, Gumbuster for every single gas-powered equipment you might have in your garage, from uh, generators, lawnmowers, snow blowers pressure washers, motorcycles, jet skis, riding mowers, commercial equipment, and so on. Gumbuster is a solution for all the issues related to the fueling on uh, gasoline engines. Thank you for watching, like us on YouTube, and have a great one.